Hello, my name is Thomas. I'm a biomedical engineering student and team lead for this project. Hi, my name is Brandon Bounds. Uh, I'm a biomedical engineer and the procurement lead. Hi, my name is Valeria and I'm one of the biomedical engineers on the team. Hi, my name is Jacob and I'm one of the mechanical engineers on the team. Hello, my name is Samuel and I'm one of the mechanical engineers on the team. And we're designing a wrist device to treat carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome, also referred to by its acronym CTS, is the most prevalent compressive neuropathy and results from compression of the median nerve by the transverse carpal ligament, also called the TCL. Compression of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel can create significant feelings of numbness and tingling with progressive loss of sensation and eventually thinner muscle atrophy as it progresses. Current medical treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome consist of anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen and local corticosteroid injections, bracing, and eventual surgical intervention should the conservative methods fail. The surgery for carpal tunnel, referred to as carpal tunnel release, involves making an incision longitudinally along the carpal tunnel ligament and relieves pressure from the median nerve. Carpal tunnel release surgery, while effective, is associated with certain risks which include injury to the median nerve, soreness that can linger for months, and wrist instability and loss of strength, most importantly. Looking beyond its associated risks, many patients are unable to undergo surgery for a variety of reasons. These can include financial difficulties, an inability to take time off work, or other issues preventing surgery. With this and the prevalence of carpal tunnel syndrome in mind, there is a need to find a way to effectively treat the symptoms of CTS without surgery. Thanks to the research performed by our, our sponsor, Dr. Shin Ming Lee, he was able to determine the, the lateral forces on the radial and ulnar sides of the wrist were effective in inducing a change in the shape of the TCL, increasing the arc, carpal arc height and the cross sectional within the carpal tunnel. This increase decreases the pressure on the medium nerve, treating the disease in an effective way and more accessible than what is available currently. Given this background, our sponsor assigned our team with the creation of a mechanical wrist device, like a brace, that will allow for the application of controlled forces to the trapezium and pisiform carpal bones located at the radial and ulnar sides of the wrist, respectively, to effectively fold the TCL outwards. Our sponsor requires the device to exhort 15 plus or minus 5 newtons on the pisiform and trapezium bones with a quick release mechanism to relieve any applied forces within one second of its activation. The device must also conform to various hand sizes and allow for direct adjustment of the forces by the user. Other sponsor requirements include that the device is compact, comfortable, and allow for mobility of the four main fingers and is easy to clean as well. Finally, the device needs to be a cost-effective solution, so our per unit cost maximum is about $100. In order to fulfill these requirements and solve the underlying challenges, the design of this device has gone through several revisions with drastic design changes throughout the process. Each step taken in this process was used as a learning opportunity. It allowed us to refine our concept and ultimately create a better product at the end. Our very first prototype for our design was a rack and pinion mechanism, which was the original vision that Dr. Lee had for this device. The way that it works is that it controls the displacement of one side of the device in order to compress both sides of the wrist with the resulting normal force. The use of the rack and pinion concept for our mechanism was effective in applying forces, but it was incapable of limiting them. Also, it was very bulky, making the device visually unappealing and difficult to integrate with the brace. So it was clear that we had to move back to the drawing board and consider new design concepts. Of the problems we faced with the original design, the biggest was the inability to limit the overapplication of forces to the wrist. This posed a safety concern as the device could easily be over tightened and it could hurt the user. We individually performed research into constant force mechanisms to address these concerns and performed another trade analysis comparing new point designs we had found. In doing so, we realized that we were overcomplicating our device, which led to a complete redesign using springs instead. Having the force be applied using a simple spring dramatically simplified our design and allowed us to heavily reduce the size of the device, which was a major concern for our sponsors. Simplifying our design to this degree opened up a vast ocean of possibilities for how to properly implement it. We again went through the exercise of iterating through different designs with this new spring mechanism. We experimented with different ways to apply the forces and considered many designs for the brace until we finally landed on a product that worked effectively and surpassed all our expectations. In the end, this was the final product we designed.
This is the force applying mechanism we designed, and it works in tandem with the brace. This brace was made of 3D printed TPU, which is a soft and pliable plastic. And for extra comfort, we added this poly cushion padding that we have attached to the inner part. The mechanism is directly attached to the brace with cables that can tighten the system. As we tighten the brace, the spring is compressed against the wrist, and this will generate a constant spring force. Our first test was the pressure accuracy and adjustability test uh, to determine the output amount of force exerted by the mechanism. It is to verify that the mechanism will produce a force that starts at zero newtons and is adjustable up to 15 plus or minus five newtons. To test the force exerted, a circuit was built using our Arduino Uno board, an interlink electronics force sensitive resistor, and the assorted connecting cables. Our second test was a force release test to determine the release rate of the mechanism. We will verify that it can act quickly release from the 15 plus and minus newtons force applied onto the wrist just under one second. This test uses the same setup as the previous one. Both of these tests passed with flying colors and we were able to size down and have different hand sizes reproduce the same results. We also had several demonstrations such as the force location accuracy, hand size variation, release interface, maintenance, portability, comfort, and hand dexterity. This test ensures that it can be used by many people, works comfortably and reliably, and can be cleaned for long-term usage. The mechanical wrist device has come a long way since its humble beginnings. While many of our designs failed, each failure provided a learning opportunity that allowed us to ultimately create a device that is significantly simpler, more effective, and elegant. We hope that this project can help improve the lives of many people who suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome. We want to thank our sponsor, Dr. Lee, and his assistant, Trevor, for this opportunity, and our mentor, Matt Christensen, for helping us throughout this process. Finally, we want to extend our thanks to the judges, organizers, and the University of Arizona staff for giving us this opportunity. Thank you all for watching.